Some of you have been asking about my adventure setup for the backcountry discovery routes. And Damon, this is for you. I'm going to answer those questions as quick as I can. Uh, welcome to the Grand Canyon. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be parked here. <laughs> so we're going to do this as quick as we can. And stick around till the end. Um, I'm going to show you my camping setup, but I'm going to talk about an alternative to camping. Uh, and I want to introduce you guys to Sterling Noren. He is the gentleman who um, filmed and produced and all that edited the Backcountry Discovery Route films. Um, so we're going to talk to him at the end of this video really quick. So stick around. <laughs> My setup is specific to light uh, adventure bike riding. Uh, Moscow Pete likes to call it enduro touring. Uh, basically, you're taking your not GS 1200 bike and you're going to throw some gear on the back, right, and, and, and load it up. And it's not necessarily made for that. So you have to embrace, you're going to have to embrace ultralight camping. Uh, philosophies to keep out keep the weight down right now my bike has 50 pounds of extra gear on it the heaviest thing being my tool roll i'm wearing an extra um, when i have everything in my backpack and my water i have an extra um, 20 pounds on and so you're kind of pushing the weight limits of the bike so real quick let's just talk about my setup you all know that i added a, a stiffer spring in the back to hold everything up working great and then specific to um, light adventure riding I have the IMS three gallon tank I also have a seven inch Samsung tablet that I have the map on um, it's big when I have it cranked up like this I can stand up on the bike and still read it and most importantly, it's 100 and, I don't know, 150 bucks between my phone, which is $700 to $1,200, depending on which phone you got. So just real quick, I don't want to make this a whole review of the bike again. Um, steering damper for when you're doing 65, 70, 75 on the highway. DOT tires, although these Motaz um, Desert HTs have to be barely DOT. <laughs> I also have my windscreen and my, um, this is the Baja Works KTM windscreen, which if you look at how it fits, it fits the shape of the 450L just perfect. And then holding everything up in the back is the Adventure Spec nav tower, which I have an outlet on. I've got heated grips, which turn on and off over there. I um, have another USB port to power the tablet, etc., etc. So that's basically my adventure setup, right? All the just a couple little things to make it more roadworthy and to make uh, navigating when you're on a BDR a lot easier. So for my adventure kit, um, again, I have the Moscow Moto Reckless 80, um, the 80. You can actually expand to bigger. Some people want to know what, which is better, the 80 or the 40. I can compress the 80 down to 40. You can expand the 40 up to 80, just saying. And a lot of times I'll leave pieces off of this and just take less than what I actually um, normally carry, and it works just fine. Uh, so I have the Mo Moscow Moto Reckless 80 in the back. I have the Moscow Moto tank bag and uh, I love this setup because if I am doing a river crossing and I drop my bike, uh, everything, all my stuff stays dry. And that's super important. Plus the system is just bomb proof. So this is what I use. Let's go through, I'll show you what's in all the bags real quick. Let me start off by saying when you pack 
your bike, all the heavy stuff should be down at the bottom. This has clothes in it, right? This is the lightest bag. And, and as we're looking through this, this bag, you'll see that I have the heavier items at the bottom and they get lighter other than one thing. As they go to the top, it just makes your bike handle so, so much better. So these open up just like this, this comes off. That pops open. So basically all it is is a dry bag and it sits in this little holster that protects the dry bag rubberized material. This is like what um, rafts are made out of. It's pretty heavy stuff. And it just sits down in there. It gets locked in pretty good. So in this one sitting right on top, I have my cycle pump. I did a video on this before. When I'm going off-road, if we're gonna be off-road for a while, I air the tires down to about 12 PSI, give or take. Um, when I come back out on the road, I air them back up to about 22 PSI. Uh, it makes a huge difference. If you're, when you're off-road, right, be off-road. Don't wish you had aired your tires down or, or done whatever. And when you're on-road, and when you're riding on the road, don't toast your tires or melt your inner tubes right, because you're running around with 10 PSI in them. That's just stupid. <laughs> Get yourself a pump, air up, air down. So in here, I got some miscellaneous stuff laying around. I got a ski strap, GoPro mount. Um, I have an extra water bottle, three liter or water bladder. I've got my, this is my air mattress. This is like an extra, extra super large. It's like this wide and about yay tall. I'm a side sleeper and I roll around, so I have smaller ones. This one's just really comfortable, and for the extra pound, I don't even care. Uh, let's see, in here is just some camp stuff. I have a flashlight. I have um, some water purifying tablets. Oh, I also have one of those life straw devices in my backpack that lives in there. I forgot to tell you about that. Uh, again, a, a, the dry bag for anything that's not in here. If I had to, I could put the dry bag over the Moscomoto bag. Um, I keep my camera in there and I have a separate dry bag for that. Again, the idea is if you're gonna do a gnarly river crossing and you're worried about dumping your, your stuff, don't dump your electronics in the river. Waterproof that and then give it a shot. I have a piece of webbing. I think this is like a 20 footer uh, as a recovery strap. I have a tarp slash ground tarp slash whatever, just a waterproof tarp. I can stretch over things, put it over the bike. Um, if you're in a really, really hot place, you can shade your tent double. So you have the rain fly and then you put this over it just to try to keep the heat down. Um, and then my sleeping bag. This is a, a 40 degree marmot bag. It packs down pretty small in its own little waterproof bag. Um, and that's it for bag one. Okay, and I'm going to stuff all this stuff back in there. Again, I didn't pull it out quite in the right order. The heaviest thing is actually this puppy, so that's going to go in first. Now, I want to leave the cycle pump on the outside on the very top even though it is technically the heaviest thing in the bag because it's the thing I'm going to get to the most right so we are definitely going to pack this heaviest on the bottom but don't be stupid about it that cycle pump on top and then it goes back in just the way it came out so the idea again is this holster which is made out of pretty heavy material will take the hit and leave your uh, rubber, rubberized dry bag safe. Um, I've yet to have one of these leak. They have yet to have one of these holsters, and I've dropped my bike a lot. Um, have yet to have one of the holsters rip or take any appreciable damage. Okay. And the way Moscow Moto has all these buckles and straps, really, really secures this. Well, we're getting this buckle down uh, because there's no rack, there's no pannier rack on this. 
All right, these do sit up against your plastic. Your plastics are gonna get worn. Uh, you can put like that clear tape over them if you want. That'll try to save your plastics a little bit of wear and then just replace those when you have to. I just, I just replace the plastics when they go bad. Um, on this side, and I'm just gonna leave the bag in and pull stuff out. Um, I have my cell phone case, which I took off. I have my basilisk ja rain jacket. Um, it's like 90 degrees out, so I have not been wearing this, but I still have it along. It's my raincoat, it's my road coat, if I'm doing any kind of road miles. Um, and it's also super burly, so if you crash in it, ain't a thing. Um, next up is my tent. Um, this is the MSR Hubba Hubba NX. It packs down really small. It's pretty light. Um, there are lighter. There are smaller. I had another Hubba Hubba, the orange one, for 10 years. And in fact, they gave it to my son. He's using it now, so they last forever. Here are a set of jumper cables. I have one of those uh, lithium ion batteries that I use as a battery pack. I also use it as a jumper just in case the bike dies, in case your bike dies, in case uh, you come across a, um, somebody else in distress. In here, and I hate to open it because this is pretty nasty. This is one of those sea line really heavy rubber dry bag. All right, so here's that sea line bag, and I'm going to cut to this because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions, so we're going to tell you what my system is for changing your oil and for uh, lubing your chain. Uh, again, I lube my chain every day, and of course you have to change your oil every 600,000 miles. So I have this kit bag here that's oil proof, waterproof, whatever. Um, inside on the top are some uh, rubber gloves, which I already have on, and I need to fill this up and throw some more in there. I have another little baggie with some rags, and my funnel. And let me get down to the good stuff. So in this is a bottle of kerosene for cleaning the chain. Um, this is the chain lube. This is actually uh, the Renthal chain lube. You, you can use whatever you want to lube your chain. Understanding it's an O-ring chain, so the main thing you're looking for is rust protection and something that won't pick up too much dirt and also something that won't damage the O-rings. The O-rings keep the lube, the good stuff, inside the chain, right? Um, again, if you want to use something like the WD-40 to clean your chain, whatever. Uh, Fort9 did a really good comparison on all the different uh, chain cleaners out there and chain lubes and what it came down to the very very best kerosene and gear oil so to clean my chain I have kerosene to clean it I have this little brush I have a bag of rags um, some people like to use a toothbrush um, which is actually a great idea maybe I'll throw a toothbrush in there at some point um, and Brett to Takis Tox Tax had a really great idea. If you don't want to carry kerosene around with you, just go to a gas station, and you can, if you can find a cup or a small container of some some kind in the gas station, you can go out to the diesel pump, and whatever's in the hose. A lot of times you can get enough um, diesel fuel out of the hose to clean your chain with that, and then it doesn't cost you anything and you don't have to carry it around and you can throw it away when you're done just another idea um, so let's see what else do I have in there okay so that's mostly the the clean your chain stuff right this is what I carry right there that's it this thing actually works pretty good once you wheel it on the brush and wiggle it around okay uh, and then a bag of rags the other thing I carry is a change of oil and I, you guys know, I like to use 
this Easy Works connection. Move this stuff out of the way. All right, that's just in there. This thing works so great if you can access your um, drain plug on your bike with it. It just it it just makes life so much easier. I'll carry a, a filter and a spare O-ring in there, and then. Um, this is the way I'm kind of experimenting doing with it. This is just a water bladder I had laying around. It's a one and a half liter water bladder um, made by Hydropack, whoever. I don't know. It's, it came out of a running pack. Platypus also makes two liter um, water bladders. And so what I will do is if I know I need to change the oil, and I want this to collapse into nothing. I don't want to carry around a big liter bottle of oil. What I'll do is I'll, I'll get my oil. This is what I use. I use the Motul. And I have this um, big Nalgene water bottle. I will fill this up to the uh, 1.2 liter mark. That way I know exactly how much water's, or I'm sorry, that way I know exactly how much oil I have, and then I'll drain this into here. Now I use this anyways, just so I don't have to measure the oil every time. And also when I drain the oil, um, I have another one that's got that's dirty, and I'm going to drain the oil into that and, and see if my oil is going up because we've been talking about gas in your oil. I want to see how much gas is in the oil. Um, okay, so that is my oil change kit too, except for here inside this bag. Let me show you, it is one of these little collapsible funnel jobbies. All right, and then I can do this pretty much mess free. Um, if it's an oil change and there's not too many miles after it, you can probably skip changing your oil filter. Uh, the oil filter on these things is so tiny. Um, I'm really worried about it getting a little bit of clog. So normally I just go ahead and change the filter anyways. Um, so this is my oil change kit for the road. Actually it's my oil change kit for any time other than the bladder. This is my clean and grease my um, chain kit on the road with the addition of maybe a toothbrush and and yeah, there you go. That's that's pretty much how I do it. Just before I go to bed or whatever, at some point in the night when I go camping, whether I'm in a hotel or whatever, I will prop the bike up and I will clean and re-lube the chain for the next morning. And then I'll give it that evening to sit and set up. Okay, here's my tool roll. Um, it's really nothing special, right? You got your tire spoons, you got your bigger wrenches, a pair of clippers, a magnetic thing. I have a chain brake, um, the one Allen wrench that's missing from the other set, um, a couple more wrenches, a couple spare bolts. I have um, wire or wheel weights. Uh, in case I throw a weight, I can still go down the highway. Some uh, hose clamps, and then all the tire patch stuff, electrical stuff, duct tape, O-rings, stuff. Uh, there's a trillion different videos out there on everybody's tool roll. Um, I maybe have a little extra stuff only because it's just me. I can't split, like I'll take I'll take this if you take that. It's just me, so I basically have to take everything. This is probably a good five pounds, and I'm gonna to try to make it lighter. I haven't gone out and buy, bought one of those titanium uh, wrench sets yet. And then the other thing I have is this um, stand, <laughs> and I'll be damned if I can remember who makes this. You guys look this up. See it? Go find this. Go find this. So basically what it does, right, it's got a little hooky end and it's adjustable for height and you get it to the right height. 
Let me take the little pen. You put the pen in. I can't do it because if I do it, the bike will tip over the way it's sitting. So basically, this guy, you put your, side, your kickstand down. This guy goes in your axle, and then you lift the bike up so it's on the front tire, the kickstand, and this thing, and then you can spin your back tire. Okay, so what you do is you, first thing you do is lock the front brake on so they can't roll forward. And you set the height on this to get your back wheel off the ground. Come around here and watch when I slide the bike front. There you go. See if I can show you that from this side. I found that that's the easiest way to do it is to pick it up from the other side. But if you're on this side and you just push the bike up, all right, now your back tire's off the ground. That's all there is to the back. And on the front, you're gonna do the same thing. Uh, you have to have the, either the bike in gear or have it um, locked up somehow. But I'll put it in these little holes for the front tire. So for the front. Stand it up a little higher. Put it down in here where it won't hit anything. And then push the bike back. There you go, now the front tire is off the ground. Oh, I still have the brake locked. And now the front tire is off the ground. And it's, it's pretty sturdy. And then you can take your front tire off, okay? That goes in the tool bag. And what else do I got in there? Oh, two, and then the very bottom I have two um, inner tubes. And what I did was when I replaced the wheels from stock and the inner tubes from stock, these are the stock inner tubes that came on the bike. And I replaced both ends with uh, ultra heavy duties, uh, especially in the front, just in case, so to avoid pinch flats. Um, so I took the, kept the stock inner tubes and put them in this little bag here. So that is everything that's on this side. And let me put all this back in. And if you were to feel the two bags, the two dry bags for the Moscomoto bags, the one on this side of the bike is a little heavier to offset the exhaust on that side. And the other thing you'll notice on the 450L is that the exhaust side bag, because the exhaust rounds out more, it sticks out further. So I put the lighter bag on the exhaust side and the one that sticks out further, just to try to keep everything a little even weight-wise. And so far, it has worked fantastic. The difference in riding this bike from last year to this year with the suspension with just the heavier spring and the better tires and all the few little things that I've done to it have made it just an absolute joy to ride. I mean, I, I, I love this bike even more than when I first got the bike. Um, now, that is not to say that you have to do all of this stuff. You really, really don't. I just really like adding Farkles to my bike and making videos about it. So if I didn't buy new stuff to put on the bike, you and I wouldn't have anything to talk about. Okay, on each side of the Reckless 80, there are these extra little pockets in the bottom. And I have two two liter fuel friends, one on each side. So between the extra two, I have an extra gallon of gas. This, I could drive my truck over. 
I could probably, I don't know, beat somebody to death with this thing before it broke. Uh, and then inside there's also a couple of little straps sitting down at the bottom. While we're talking about this, I've also ordered the Nomad five gallon tank. So once that's on, then I won't have to put fuel in here. I'll put the tool roll, I'll put the heavier things again down low. So I have one of those on each side. So that's an extra gallon of gas. Um, on the back, I have one of these extra Moscomoto little gear bag thingies. And all this in there are tripods for videos. So they're right there. They're super fast to get to. If, if it's not easy <laughs> for me, if it's not easy, I ain't doing it. I just, I won't take pictures or I won't use the tripod and I'll, I'll miss some shots. And I'll miss doing stuff like this. So tripods live in there. And then this is, they call this the beaver tail. I, I don't know, I didn't name it. And it flips back this way and it has a little mat, mat pouch and you can keep different things in here. Here are my sneakers. I, I used to take flip-flops, but I hate riding in flip-flops and shifting in, in flip-flops really hurts. Here are the tent poles. They have their own bag up and away from everything where they won't rub holes in everything. Um, the other side of the beaver tail has this little net thing you can put stuff in. I have Windex wipes for when I can't see out of my bug infested face anymore. And then you get a 22 liter uh, duffel bag. This is called the Stinger 22. It comes off. It's a backpack. If you open this up, there are straps in there. You can use it as a backpack inside. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull this out. I have my electronics for you guys. In the very bottom, yeah, I got a shirt. It's also my dirty laundry bag. My Oakley goggles in case it's dusty. It's one good thing about when you ride by yourself, you're not in somebody else's dust all the time. Uh, and then up top I have my clothes and toiletries and on the bottom I have that big black case again That's just more GoPro mounts and chargers and uh, The starter batteries in there With a bunch of electronic stuff uh, Again, if I didn't video anything My back would be so much lighter Okay, so that's it. I'm not gonna show you all that stuff. Everybody's got their own Opinion on what video stuff to use, what not to use, blah blah blah. I use GoPros F2, I have a 7, and I just got the 8. I'm sure if you look at the quality of the videos, as you go back in time, you can tell the GoPro 8 really does a better job with the picture. It has a much, much better picture. Okay, and that sticks there. And then this whole thing, while we're looking at it, I'm not trying to sell you guys a Reckless 80. I just want you to see why I use what I use. Basically, it's got this heavy plastic um, base to it that wraps around and has the wings that go in the backside of these. And the whole thing gets strapped from here to here, and it pulls it back. And up front, it's got these two straps on either side, and that pulls it front. And that really, really keeps this thing steady. I'm impressed with how maneuverable this bike is with this system on. Now, you can feel the weight for sure. There's no getting around the weight issue, but it doesn't shift, it doesn't bounce, it never moves to throw you off. And it locks down really, really good. All right, all that torques down. And when you look at the um, Reckless 80, one of the things I love about it is it's so over-engineered. They went around and they imagined, oh, what if this broke? How could we fix that? And how could we make that user fixable? So I carry a couple NSR straps just in case this strap breaks, I can replace it. In case this little thing breaks, I can replace it, right? I can add it to the Moly strap and, and still use it. It's still functional. Even if you took a knife to this thing, you just slashed it all up. 
Okay, and then this is just an extra little doodad <laughs> that I had nowhere else to put. It somehow ended up here. Okay, so that's that, sitting on top of the Skaggs rack, um, the Mosca Moto. There's not a whole lot in, well, I shouldn't say that. There is a whole bunch of stuff in here. So there's this little uh, zipper compartment at the bottom, tire gauges, helmet locks, extra GoPro batteries, right? And then in here's my little Django GoPro mount if I'm gonna take GoPro, and then my camera, and then some maps. That's pretty much it. This thing takes up most of the room. Uh, so this is a Sony A6400 before everybody starts asking. It does do video, I have done video, um, but mostly I got this to, to do the gram, man, to add to my gram. You should all go check out my Instagram channel. Is it a channel? What is it? I don't know what it is. A grid? What's an Instagram thing? Go check out the gram. I don't know what to call it. Um, okay. That is pretty much it. I'm sure, I'm sure you still have questions. Let's see, as far as what I wear, I ascribe to the Moto uh, Enduro Touring Theory in that I don't, have a, I don't have a jacket on right now, but I still have all my protection, right? I could take my jacket off, let all the air just blow right through all these little holes, and I don't cook to death, um, where if your armor is built into your jacket, and you have to wear your jacket all the time. So I'll usually have a long sleeve on underneath just to um, keep this thing from chafing. It doesn't matter what you use. I have an Alpine Stars uh, pressure suit. I love that thing. This thing, once it gets warm, it like, it just kind of melts to you. You don't even know you have it on really which is pretty cool. It's a little bulky, it's kind of heavy. You're gonna to have to upsize your jacket, but it's got that 3DO, you know, smash a hammer on it, which I've never done, but in theory, I could hit myself with a hammer and it wouldn't hurt. Right now I'm rocking the Adventure Spec uh, Atacam, Atacama. You know, you know how I am with names. Their pants, uh, I like them, they're way too heavy, they're way too warm for this weather. Let's just say that. Uh, the boots, I decided to go with CD because they fit my feet. I'm not saying they're the best boot ever. In fact, in my opinion, the best boot right now for enduro touring, for uh, light, light adventure riding is the Alpenstar Enduro, now that they're waterproof. But Alpenstars are kind of a big, they fit high volume feet and I have little small volume feet. So I went with the CDs, they fit my feet really good. And there's also kind of this rubber thing that goes all the way up to about here that kind of helps seals water out. I have a climb uh, under base layer uh, only because I wear knee guards, knee braces all the time. I, I don't, I just, unless I'm just going to the grocery store, I do not ride without these things. I've smashed my knees on so many things Wear knee protection. Just protect your knees, protect your digits, protect your bits. Uh, that's pretty much it. We did a review on my helmet, my RI. It's still, it's still the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I, you know what? I know I'm forgetting stuff. but that's all I can think of right now. So, um, thank you guys for watching this first part about what I carry um, and my setup and how I have the bike set up for uh, the backcountry discovery routes. You know, these are week long things where you need to carry all your tools and your, all your extra stuff. Uh, and I still do have some room on here. I could add some more stuff to it. 
Uh, but, but this is my setup. Thanks for watching this part. Now, if you're not going to camp or if you just need a place to stay or if you just want to go hang out with a really cool dude, all right, at this point I'm going to cut to um, Sterling Noren and the Jonquin Hotel or Motel. Jonquin? Jonquillin? I'm going to let him pronounce it, okay? We're going to talk to him about staying there as opposed to camping. All right, here's my first night's stay was in Bisbee, Arizona, where I started the BDR. And I spent the night at Hotel Jonquil in Bisbee. And if you don't know anything about this awesome place to stay, just know that it is owned by Sterling Noren, the gentleman who uh, made all the backcountry discovery route films. Um, you'll probably see them in the in the different films. This is the back of the hotel. It's got this really cool little seating and staging area. All right, A little sauna hot tub action. Sterling is making some videos about riding around here in Bigsby. I'm going to call that Bigsby every time and it's Bisby. Bisby. Say it right, John. Um, in Bisby, Arizona. And I'll, you know how I do this, I'll throw a link up wherever those links go and we'll, we'll talk about his channel. Or I'll show you his channel. You'll go check it out. And just in case this entices you, they're going to change that room right there. He's talking about making that room into a bar. So, <laughs> so what goes better together than backcountry discovery routes and beer? I don't know. All right. Well, now that it's 100 degrees in the middle of the day, I think I'm going to go ride the backcountry discovery route. <laughs> Let's go number two. So here's Sterling. This is the owner of the, how do you pronounce that? It's the John Quill. John Quill. If you know anything about me, you know I can't pronounce my own name. So it's the John Quill in Bisbee, not Bigsby, whatever I said before, just forget that, uh, in Arizona. And we took a little walk around it. I told him you're going to put a bar in uh, room number six. That's the plan. Um, we'll have a bar. We've got a stage. Yeah. We've got an outdoor sauna. We're about 10 miles from the Mexico border and about 25 miles from the start of the Arizona BDR. So if I throw a rock really hard, I can hit Mexico from here. You can. You can, <laughs> you can walk across the street and have tacos. Oh, real tacos. I love it. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to go cook myself now. Have a good ride. We'll look for you out there in the social media world. I'll be out there. All right. See you guys for in Bisbee. All right. Well, that's the video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if I forgot anything or you have comments, questions, you know how this works, hit me up and, uh, and I'll try to answer everything. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching from the Grand Canyon. Thanks for watching from the Grand Canyon.